Then the Pharisees went and took counsel how to trap him in his words. And when they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are true, and uh, teach the way of God truthfully, and care for no man, for you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us then, what do you think? Is it lawful to pay taxes to Caesar or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why put me to test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. And Jesus said to them, Whose image is this and whose inscription? They said, Caesar's. Then he said to them, Give back therefore to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to God what belongs to God. Good morning. Welcome to a short biblical reflection, the Gospel reading from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 22, verses 15 up to 21. It is the question about paying taxes to Caesar, the Gospel reading for 29th Sunday in Ordinary Time, year A. Let us see again the biblical context, again focusing mainly, almost, on the Gospel according to Matthew, Concerning the taxes, in the Gospel according to Matthew, we find yet another text earlier in chapter 17, where we read, when they, when they reached Capernaum, the tax collectors of the temple tax came to Peter and said, Does your teacher not pay the tax temple tax? He said, Yes, he does. And when he came home, Jesus spoke of it first, asking, What do you think, Simon? From whom do kings of the earth take toll or tribute? From their children or from others? When Peter said, from others, Jesus said to him, Then the children are free. However, so that we do not give offense to them, go to the sea and cast a hook. Take the first fish that comes up, and when you open its mouth, you will find a coin. Take that and give it to them for you and for me. Concerning the Herodians, in the Gospel according to Matthew are mentioned only in our text, but in the Gospel according to Mark, a part of the parallel text in chapter 12, we find it also that they are mentioned together with the Pharisees, uh, at the, in chapter 3, after the series of controversies, the last ones concerning the Sabbath day. And uh, the Herodians, some try to identify as those who uh, were working uh, uh, for Herod, but others also would, like Herod's officials, uh, while others try to understand uh, and see them like a religious group, like many others at, in biblical times at Jesus' times, like the Pharisees, the Sadducees, Zealots, and so on. So they would be a religious group in wider sense. In fact, in such a way, uh, some father's church identified them as uh, those people who tried to identify uh, Herod as a, a messiah, treating him in messianic terms, as liberator in some sense. Uh, if we would just take uh, a part of going into details and so on, but like seeing in them those two groups, the Pharisees and the Herodians, as two complementary or somehow distinct groups. Pharisees representing the more strictly religious group, uh, those who try to follow faithfully the prescriptions of the law, why the Herodians would be more on this uh, political side, so a religious group, but painted, painted in political colors, civil colors. Therefore, this question, if it is allowed to pay taxes to Caesar, would be a tricky, because if Jesus was saying negatively, then the Herodians could react to it. But when Jesus was saying positively, uh, then uh, the Pharisees, if they were taking the stand of some radicals who tried to oppose paying taxes, then they would be against Jesus. And then uh, the, the statement, why do you put me to test, you hypocrites? This word, Greek word, is translated as 
to put to test uh, is in fact the same word used in temptations of Jesus in chapter 4. And uh, the last word uh, yet to make reference uh, the concept of giving back, it is compound word, which literally would be that meaning to give back, to return something to the owner. And it is used in uh, the parable of the unmerciful servant uh, let, in chapter 18. Re let me just read the last verses. Should not have mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you. And in anger, the Lord handed him over to the torturers until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly father will also do to every one uh, of you if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. Here in this text, it is translated uh, to pay. Uh, we could also translate here to give back until uh, uh, he gives back his entire debt. In our gospel passage, Jesus answers and makes clearly the distinction uh, between our civil responsibility and the religious responsibility. Paying back to Caesar, giving back to Caesar what belongs to him and uh, giving back, paying back to God what belongs to God. However, uh, probably we uh, sometimes in our times emphasize more this aspect of our civil responsibility and neglecting the second aspect which is even in that parable more important because it focuses on Caesar but then turns to and ends with this reversal paying also to God not only to Caesar what belongs to Caesar yes but also to God what belongs to God and if you would connect it with the preceding parable of the wedding guests it would also be matching because that person who came to wedding fest without uh, having proper garment and was cast out would represent those who neglect this aspect of paying back to god what belongs to god because civil authorities in our times have instruments to execute paying taxes and to follow people who avoid doing it. Why God doesn't use such uh, tools during our earthly life and therefore we could neglect it? Of course, being uh, aware about final judgment, but again, that uh, notion of final judgment can somehow escape from our mind and we can completely neglect it. Why it is necessary also to remember that in our every life, we should not only have this our civil responsibility, which much nat more naturally comes to us, but also our religious responsibility towards God. I would like to wish you a nice day, a nice reflection on this gospel reading.